Today we're going to be showing you how to install our MVT intercooler kit for the Nissan R35 GTR. Start by removing the clips, holding the wheel arch liners to the front splitter and the under tray. Do this using a screwdriver or a trim tool. With the clips removed, remove the rubber grommets that are hiding 10 and 12 mil bolts holding the front splitter to the car. Next, remove the trim clips holding the front slam panel cover to the car. Remove this and place it to one side. With that removed, you have access to the clips holding the front bumper to the car. Again, remove these from the bumper. Next, remove the side repeaters. This is done by popping the clip out from behind the wheel arch liner and twisting the indicator bulb to remove it from the assembly. With this removed, you'll have access to two 10mm bolts which will require an extension on a ratchet to reach. With these bolts removed, you can now pull on the front bumper from the wheel arch, disconnecting the bumper from the clips on the wing and underneath the headlight. Do this individually to both sides. With the bumper disconnected, pull it forward and allow it to sit down, giving you access to the rear where you can disconnect all loom connections and screen wash pipes. With the bump removed, you can remove the foam strip in front of the crash bar and remove the eight 12 more bolts holding the crash bar in place. Next, undo the three 10 mm nuts holding the front splitter supports and pull them to one side. With the crash bar removed, you can remove the three 10 mm bolts holding the screen wash bottle in place. Roll this forward, disconnect the screen wash pump and the loom connections. Now remove a series of 10mm bolts on the oil cooler to the car. You want to pull that forwards and slightly to the driver's side and this will give you more access to the boost pipes which we'll require later. Now remove the wheel arch liners. These can be easier with the wheels off if you don't have access to long screwdrivers. Otherwise you can do it with the wheels still on, no problem. Now disconnect the front loom from the front support just by unclipping the clips and squeeze and push through the bonnet clips as well to get the release cables disconnected. Next grab the bonnet release cables at the base, pop the blue plastic out of the metal support and remove the cable from the catch. Now unclip the MAF sensors from the airbox and loosen the Jubilee clip holding the intake pipe to the airbox. Next, remove the two 12mm bolts holding the recirculation valves to the boost pipe, being careful not to drop the gasket. Now disconnect the earths from the front of the engine. With that pulled out of the way, you can now remove the filter from the airbox with the filter removed, you can grab it onto the airbox, pull it up to disconnect from the rubber grommets, pull the rear out first, and the front will simply slide out. Now remove the map sensors from the top of the boost hoses, that's a 10mm per map sensor, and that will just pull out of the pipe and place it to one side. Next, remove the clip from the screen wash bottle filler neck and slide that up and out of the way. 
Now you can begin to loosen the Jubilee clamps on the stock boost pipes and remove sections at a time. With the pipes removed, you can now unbolt the 10mm bolts holding the front loom mount to the front panel. Now disconnect the two bolts holding the power steering cooler to the front panel and let that drop down. Now remove a series of 10mm bolts holding the front panel to the car. You'll see that the front panel is actually a separate piece so you can see where the seam lines are and only remove the bolts that are holding that to the front. Now simply pull up and forward and the whole front end will remove from the car with the intercoolers attached. Now remove the 10 12mm bolts holding the intercoolers into the front panel. With these removed you can now lift the intercooler slightly and unbolt the boost pipes. Slide the intercoolers down to the bottom to release them from the front shroud. Cut the rivets on the front shroud with these snips and remove it and put it to one side. With the shroud removed you can now install our MVT cores which will bolt directly to the front shroud. You have the choice to trim the removed shroud around our thicker cores and re-rivet it back on or simply leave it to one side unmodified. Lift the front shroud back onto the car, lifting it high and dropping it back down into position. Next, lay out the intercooler pipes as shown, ready to install on the car. The way to know which side is correct is to have the map sensor mount facing upwards with the recirculation valve facing inwards. That means you've got the right pipe on the right side of the car. Cold side lower pipe, the pipe should face inwards with the three bolts on the bracket being in a triangle formation with a single bolt at the top and the two bolt holes at the bottom. For the off side of the car, you want the shorter of the two 90 degree silicon reducers and for the lower boost pipe note that the welded on boss is very close to the weld and it's also to the outer edge. For the near side of the car the lower boost pipe has the boss further away from the weld as shown and towards the inside of the car. The longer of two silicon 90 reducers is for the near side also. Separate the four smaller Michelot clamps from the rest as these will be used for the throttle bodies and the turbos. First install the silicon 90 reducers onto the turbos. Then install the lower straight 3 inch silicon pipe onto the intercooler and insert the pipe between the two. Make sure the lower clamps have the bolts on top of the intercooler. Next install the lower pipe of the cold side
next install a straight 3 inch silicon and slide it all the way down the installed pipe. This will allow access to get the upper boost pipe into position. With the boost pipe located, now slide the silicon back up over the upper boost pipe before clamping it in place. Now reinsert the map sensors into the pipework and reinstall the 10mm bolt holding it in place. Next, drop the airboxes back into position by lowering the front in first and then pushing down the back to locate into the grommets and pop back into the intake pipe. Now reattach the brackets holding the airboxes in place. Refit the two 12mm bolts holding the recirculation valves onto the boost pipe, making sure to reuse the OEM gasket. Now reinstall the front loom mounting bar with a series of 10mm bolts. With that installed, you can reconnect the bonnet catch cables, making sure to locate them in place, locking the blue plastic back into the catch. Now sit the oil cooler back into place, reinserting the timber bolts, holding it in position. Now use the trim clips to reattach the front duct. And attach the support bars on the boost pipes just in front of the wheels. Reconnect the screen wash bumper loom connections and insert the three 10 bolts holding that in place. Now lift the crash bar back into place and install the eight 12 mm bolts. and reinstall the split support bars for the 10mm nuts. Now refit the wheel axe liners making sure all clips are back in place and the screws are back in on the wings. Now taking care refit the bumper not to scratch the front wings. Lift the front centre into place first. With that hooked on you can lift the side up at a time making sure to clip it back under the headlight and back into the wing clips. With the bumper clip back in, you can now reinsert the two 10mm bolts per side behind the side repeaters. Next, reinstall the front splitter by slotting it in at the rear first, then lifting it up and installing the three 12mm bolts into the splitter support brackets. Install the remaining 10mm bolts underneath the under tray. Next, install all the remaining trim clips into the under tray. Your MVT intercooler is now installed and ready to use.